Hi everyone, welcome back to Steady OT with Sophie. This week's topic is on low vision. I know I've posted a YouTube video before about low vision, different types of conditions that one may have. I realized that we as OTs need to know the evals, assessments, as well as the intervention. So I have combined the PowerPoint that will help you for the board's exam. This week's topic is on low vision intervention. What you need to know on each low vision condition, such as central and peripheral vision. For central vision loss, we need to decrease glare, improve contrast. Eccentric viewing is used by the patient to compensate for central vision loss by turning the head and body to use peripheral vision. Here is an example, peripheral vision field location to the left of fixation. It shows exactly how it happens. Um, here's an example of macular degeneration and how the retina is working behind the eye, of course. Also, for example, for cataracts, we would do um, different types of treatments such as uh, glasses that they need to wear, you know, from glare, magnifiers to see, you know, books, magazines, or other form of reading material. And bright lighting is always great, especially if they're writing on the right side. So you use the opposite side for the light to come from. Because let's say you are writing something on the right side, right? And you have really poor vision. You can't see what you're writing. So you need to change your lamp on the opposite side, which has to be in the front on the left side. So you can see what you're writing. Otherwise, if you have the lamp behind you on the right side, it's really hard for you to see what you're writing. And in a way, the light is not going straight to the paper and kind of um, decreases the lighting in the area. Diabetic retinopathy. We use Amsler grid training, which I have here as an example. It shows what happens to the vision. So um, we can see this, right? This looks normal, but for someone who has um, macular degeneration, they see this. This is how their vision is when they view it. So they do eccentric viewing as well. Um, they wear tinted glasses, environmental modification, which I'm gonna discuss much later in the PowerPoint, and electrical magnification devices, which is really important for someone who has diabetic retinopathy. They have a hard time seeing like what's in front of them. Diplopia, we use an eye patch to cover one eye so we can decrease double vision. Prism glasses, which is an eye patch on the nasal area. It also includes partial visual occlusion, such as applying a strip of oblique material, such as surgical tape, and you do visual training for them to improve their vision. Now for peripheral vision loss, you compensate by moving the head and body around to view peripheral vision areas, such as, let's say you're sitting by your desk, you see your computer, because your central vision is not affected. But on the side of your desk, you don't see what's going on. So let's say if someone pass, passes by on the right side of your peripheral vision, you won't even know they're there unless if you turn your head. So in this case, how would someone with peripheral vision see? They would have to turn their head to the right side to see if someone's passing by or not, right? Okay. so. They use electrical magnification devices as well and adjusted lighting patterns to reduce glare. It's important to reduce glare and improve lighting. Now, the assessments that we use for vision loss or low vision impairments, 
is visual acuity, such as Lighthouse Near Acuity Test, which is right here. This is how it looks. Snellen e-chart or tumbling e-chart, which is right here. You see this in the optometrist's office or the optician office which is assessed by an optometrist. Also visual fields assessments that they use is confrontation testing, which is right here. What usually happens is the test is used for visual field. So what the examiner does is ask the patient to cover the eye with the card and stand about two feet away and maintain eye contact. The examiner moves the finger starting from peripheral side and asks the patient to say now when the finger is first visible. Then there is a contrast sensitivity test, which we see right here. So you basically can detect letters that are gradually less contrasted with the white background as your eyes move down the chart. You see that, right? It starts from really dark, bold letters and then goes straight down to lighter letters. Now, I wonder if some of you can see this. And lastly, we uh, assess for clock drawing test, which is in the picture here. This is how it's supposed to look. Uh, patient usually can draw the whole clock without making any errors. But for someone who has Alzheimer's disease or, or Parkinson's, um, would draw the picture differently. As you can see here, some numbers are separate or too close together. But in this case, the healthy one is able to draw the numbers with the proper spacing and placement between the numbers. As you can see here, they even draw the arrows. And in this case, you don't see the arrows and all the numbers are pretty close together. And here it's just squished together. So what do you do for environmental assessment? You examine lighting in the home yard, contrast of items in the environment and glare. Then you identify optical and adaptive aids the client currently has, how and whether they are used, and their effectiveness. There are other interventions that you would use with clients who have low vision, such as large print books, talking clocks, computer adaptation, use of contrast in the environment, bold line paper and bold tipped pens, reduce visual and physical clutter, modifying the environment, increasing lighting, decreasing glare. And lastly, we use eccentric viewing, which I mentioned earlier, is maximizing the use of their remaining vision, such as having a central vision loss, by rotating head or turning their trunk to use peripheral vision using a technique called eccentric viewing. Here is some quick hints for practicing therapists or students who are getting ready for the board exam. So what do you do as a therapist? You use adequate lighting without glare. You organize and declutter the physical and visual environments so the client doesn't have any risk of falls or any other issues such as hurting themselves while in the kitchen. If it's a mess, there's a big possibility they can cut their finger or even um, burn themselves if there are things on the floor. So it needs to be neat, tidy, and clean. Then you improve contrast between objects and work surface by putting contrast tape, which makes it easier for the client to see where he is going in the house. For instance, putting contrast tape on the stairs while he goes from the first floor to the second floor for him to see where the steps are exactly so he doesn't fall. 
then you also can increase font of writing material from 14 to 16 font or larger. And lastly, you write with a dark marker or use dark text on a white surface, such as a tactile indicator. You want to focus on using different types of sensory input, right? So you would want to use either something that talks or can be felt with the fingers. So for example, if the client likes to cook a lot, make sure that the microwave has a tactile indicator for the client to feel it. And if the client is able to hear better as opposed to feeling with their fingers because they might have diabetes, then it's best to put a timer on or a clock that talks, that way they know when to turn off the oven. Here's the reference page. Thank you so much for watching Steady OT with Sophie. I hope this topic really helped you uh, prepare for the board exam and as well preparing for the skilled nursing facility and other settings that may need low vision. Please subscribe, follow, and share with your friends and other colleagues. Thank you.